In this era of DNA exonerations, we acknowledge that innocents are convicted, but we have not grappled with what to do when there is no test for innocence. The fate of SBS affirms that good faith alone cannot forestall terrible mistakes and that the surest of convictions may not stand in for truth. The head of the intensive care unit came in and said, your son has a skull fracture. We were shocked. We, we thought they had the wrong child. My husband, who's 6'7", fell backwards holding the baby off of the back porch and into the grass below. Right away we called 911. DCFS and police investigators began questioning us, asking what had happened to our child. And the second CAT scan, they said that they saw a chronic subdural hematoma, which indicated old bleeding, and that's when we were accused of shaking Ryan. Our children were taken out of the home. I'm in the hospital with a baby that we don't know whether he's going to live or die, and I have kids at home that I don't know if they're going to be taken at any second. The investigation lasted 61 days, and at which time it was decided that Ryan did not have this chronic subdural hematoma. During the CAT scan, he moved. They misinterpreted that line as a fracture. I feel like we had no idea what was coming, and there was no way that we could defend ourselves against something that we couldn't see, touch, feel, or hear. Thinking about the story of shaken baby syndrome, I see too little humility, and too little skepticism, too much willingness to blame. Deborah Turkheimer is just a hero among parents that have been falsely accused. Her book takes away the emotion and lays out the facts and the story of so many families. You know, she's a hero. <laughs> you know, I look at her courage and the courage of those that I've written about, um, and I feel really inspired. The Johan K. decision was an appellate court decision that came out in June 2013, and it was really groundbreaking in the way that it addressed these types of cases, which is where Abuse is presumed to have occurred based merely on the existence of certain medical findings. And the appellate court said, no, that's not sufficient, that's not enough. Ellen Domp was the trial attorney for the parents in the Johan K. Juvenile Court case. They had been brought into the juvenile court system with the removal of their two children. They were treated as if they had horribly abused their child. Well, I've been a lawyer quite a long time, it was my judgment that I would prevail. And so when I received the, the verdict, it was very um, devastating. I thought a fresh eye would be really good. Let someone else look at this record and tell me, you are not crazy, you should have won this. The way that Ellen was able to pull out uh, all these different threads of evidence from various uh, medical experts from a variety of backgrounds was was really brilliant. I like the medical, medically complex uh, cases. In fact, um, my mother called me Dr. Dompf, but don't quit your day job. There's no way that, that the appellate court opinion would have taken place if not for the masterful trial work that Ellen had conducted for the family. Ellen's just a warrior. I'm honored and I respect the family defense. They fight the fight and they take on Goliath. They do. They take on these agencies that are very entrenched in their ways, immovable forces, and they move them. Professor Deborah Turkheimer has been the leading voice for the exoneration through the legal system of people who are wrongly accused of causing a head injury to a child. Ellen personifies excellence in a trial attorney who is fighting to exonerate the wrongly accused. We would not have had the success that we've had without the wonderful support of so many people throughout the country who have been consistent supporters of ours. So thank you. It would not be possible without you.